Well, welcome to the River Severn. And what a fine way to start the video. First trot through, and we've got a fish on. And as you might have guessed, this video is all about float fishing. Hopefully, I'm going to try and show you a few little tips on how to get the most out of your day's float fishing. So I'm going to get this fish in and have a little look at it, and then we'll run you through some of the some of the basics, some of the things you need to get yourself float fishing. And get out here and try this for yourself because, believe you me, it really is good fun and you can have some really good sport doing this. And how about that? Lovely way to start the day. We uh, tried on a, a different stretch this morning, we had no joy. So we've come down to this, this stretch down at Bridge North, first trot through, we've had this lovely little barbel, and uh, he's well rested. Now we're gonna get him back, and then we're gonna run through some of the kit you need to catch some lovely fish just like this one. Hopefully a few more tips along the way. Let's get this one back. So we're down on the River Severn today, we're doing a bit of float fishing, and I want to quickly run through the gear that I'm using. Now one of the most important things, and I mean the most important thing, is using the correct line. I'm using a six pound floating line. Now it's really, really important that you use a floating line. Uh, there's a, a couple of reasons for that. So the first one is obviously so you can keep in control of the float. If the line is floating on top of the water, it's much easier to, to just mend the line. If the line starts to sink, when you do get a bite, when you strike, you're not going to come into direct contact with a fish. You're going to end up pulling all that slack line up out of the water and there's a good chance you might not end up hooking the fish at all. So it's really important, fish just scratched there, it's really important that you, uh, you, really, you do use a, a floating line. Now I'm using the new Glide Mono, um, and this is going to sound a bit biased, I don't know, but this is probably by far the best line, floating line, that I have used personally. I've been using it since last season, since we, we started testing it, um, and it's fantastic. It picks up through the water really quickly, it doesn't sink, and it just makes float fishing so much easier. Now, it goes without saying really that you need to have balanced tackle as well. It's no good putting a big heavy reel on, on a rod like this. You're going to be holding it for long periods of time. You need something that's going to be fairly lightweight. I've got the Infernos SL4000 Gold on there. Now just bear in mind, for this particular reel, it's got quite a deep spool. So if you're going to be putting some floating line on, you might want to back it out first. Um, if you just go in for the just start spooling up straight away, you're probably going to end up with only half the spool filled. So just bear in mind, you might want to back it up first. Now, going down to the business end, we're in quite fast water. So I'm using 
especially stick. This is a line through one. I like to use a line through one just because it means I've got to use less rubber on the, um, on the rig itself. I've only got a piece of rubber just down the bottom. And then I've got a four gram olivette. That is a six gram float and I'm using a four gram olivette. I actually like to undershot my floats. Uh, it's just, just personal preference. It just enables me to see the float much further down the run so I can let it go much further and I can still keep good eye contact on it. And then down to one of our quick snap swivels. So this is really simple, little swivel with a quick change with a little rubber stop on it so I can quickly just change my hook links. So if I get snagged up and I lose a hook link, I can just quickly pop another one on. Or if the hook, hook point goes blunt at any point, I can just quickly change. Easy as that. Um, the rod itself, I'm using a 13 foot glide. Now, it's got plenty power to cope with the biggest barbel. Um, but the action, you see it's got a lovely, lovely sort of soft tip playing action and all the power is in the middle to the bottom end of the rod. So that means it's really forgiving so I can get away with using much lighter lines than I would normally. If you're using too much of a stiffer rod, you're going to be putting all the pressure on your end tackle. So I've got a six pound main line and I've got a six pound hook link. Now because I've got a nice soft rod, you're increasing the strength of all your end tackle. So I can, I can give the fish plenty of jip in the flow. Um, so we had a nice barbel on earlier, I was able to give it loads of uh, pressure and I wasn't worried about the hook link or the line giving, giving way at any point. So those are probably my important parts of float fishing. So if you're going to take up float fishing, make sure you've got the right tackle and don't forget a good pair of waders as well. Now, to be fair, I could probably be in here with my swim shorts and a pair of crocs today, but I don't really like dipping the uh, gentleman bits too far in the water. <laughs> I'm going to run this float down that crease again. Hopefully, there's going to be another fish or two waiting to feed. Okay, so I've just put that chub back. Now after every fish, I'm just gonna feed little handfuls of bait, just across the back there. So as it runs around, down past that crease, I wanna run this float just across the front of them trees where I think the fish are gonna be. So in my little box here, I've got some hemp and there's some tiger nuts in there. Now you might not know this, but Bob will actually like nuts. And I've also got some sweet corn, another great bait for chub and barbel. It's quite underrated really, quite underused, but they do love a bit of sweet corn. So I'm gonna put a bit of that over the back before I put the float down. It's important to try and keep in contact with the float all the way down the run. Just by trapping the line with your finger on the spool you can slow it up, you can lift the, the bait up off the bottom. So if there's, there's a certain section of the river where you, your float keeps dipping under, where it's dragging bottom, you can touch the spool. I thought we had a fish on there, just like that. Touch the spool and bring it up and over the, the obstruction. 
So you need to keep, if the line starts to go in front of the float, you need to make sure you mend it with the rod. Keep the line behind the float at all times so you're ready to strike. What you don't want is a load of slack line. So when you strike, you end up pulling all that slack line in first and not really connecting with the fish. So, as I said earlier, I'm using the new Glide Mono. Now I'm using the six pound version, but it's also available in eight, 10 and 12. Now personally, I wouldn't go any higher than eight for my barbel fishing. Perhaps if I was on the Trent, um, when you're fishing for, you know, much bigger average size fish, then yeah, I might step it up to the 10. But for the likes of the seven and the eight and the six and the eight is perfect. Now the 10 and the 12 is also gonna be great for your surface carp fishing as well. So make sure you give it a try. It'll be out really soon. It's fantastic line. I honestly can't praise it enough. It's been brilliant today. Picks up off the water really quickly, as you might see in the footage. It really is superb line. Okay, so I wanna quickly just touch on the rig end. Something I do with my meat stops, and this will help you to not lose any of your plastic components. So on the rig itself, I tie quite a big loop. When I do that, I attach a little ring swivel that's like a, a bait, bait ring swivel that you get from the carp angling side of fishing. And then what I do is I cut my piece of plastic, which comes in the meat stop packaging. And then I thread that on. And because it's got like a, a ring on it, it grips onto that type tightly onto that piece of plastic. So that is never coming off there. When you get a fish, it'll still be on. You can use that all day and it'll never come off that swivel. So when you attach your meat, you can just hook it through the eye on that swivel, pull it through, pull the meat off, excess meat, and then the hook on the stop itself hooks through the eye on the swivel. Quite fiddly. And then you can just pull it all together and then I just like to just give it a quick push. Push on the plastic and push on the stop. So it pulls it all in. And then I can have plenty of casts with that piece of meat. And it'll stay on a lot longer. And obviously the, 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 the length of time your meat stops on is gonna really depend on how tough the meat is. So you leave it out in the sun a little bit, let it go a bit tougher. Some tins of meat are tougher than others, like Spam's quite tough. This meat I've got with me today is actually quite soft. So I've left it out in the sun to go a little bit harder. But uh, if you cut a nice big chunk of meat, you'll get a lot more uses out of it than a little slither of meat. So there you go, that's how I attach my meat. And you'll get all those plastic components back every time. When we got here this afternoon, we had two fish really quickly, and then after that, it just seemed to die a death. We've walked as far as the eye can see down this stretch, tied every likely swim, and to be honest, it's not happened. It's been really tough. Um, the sun is getting quite hot now, it's getting to me a little bit. I feel a bit burnt. I think we're going to call it a day. But I hope you've learned something. I hope you've learned a few, few tips to take into your own float fishing. I think I'm gonna go and have me a nice pint in the pub because uh, I can't act the sun anymore and I'm absolutely parched. So I'm gonna wrap this up. And hopefully we'll see you again sometime. Next time, hopefully the fish are a bit more obliging because today I did not want to really know. <laughs> Let's get to the pub. Thank <laughs> you.